All right, let's start with number one here in 5.4. Uh, so this is just uh, helping us to get some practice and become really familiar and comfortable with the inverse relationship between natural log of x and e to the x. For instance, e to the natural log, when you put natural log in the exponent of e, uh, they have an inverse relationship, and so they quote unquote cancel each other out, and you're left with x. And x is here, 4 is there, x is 4. Um, next we'll do number 5. That's 9 minus 2 e to the x equals 7. So obviously we want to get x by itself, uh, so let's work on getting the, at least the, the expression that has x in it by itself, so we will subtract 9 from both sides, so I get negative 2 e to the x equals 7 minus 9, so uh, negative 2 e to the x equals negative 2 e to the x equals 1, uh, and that's... Uh, you know, we've got e to the x equals 1. And how do we get x by itself? If we take the natural log of e to the something, then we get that something. So we'll take the natural log of both sides. Uh, so the natural log of e to the x is x. And the natural log of 1 is 0. So x is 0. And that makes sense. The x would have to be 0. The power up here would have to be 0 in order for 9 minus 2 times something to be 7. 9 minus 2 is 7, so this would have to be a 1, which means this would have to be 0. Um, number 8. 200 times e to the negative 4x. Uh, that's equal to 15. So let's work on getting the expression that has x in it by itself. We could divide by 200. So e to the negative 4x equals 15 over 200 equals, uh, let's see, 5, 3, uh, 3 over 40. Um, just doing that in my head there, that's right. Uh, so e to the negative 4x equals 3 over 40. Um, now we want to get this out of the exponent, so we'll take the natural log of that, because when we take the natural log of e to a power, we get the power. We'll take the natural log of this. Uh, so we'll just call it the natural log of 3 over 40. Uh, and now we'll divide by negative 4. x equals the natural log of 3 over 40 over a negative 4. And we could rewrite this in uh, a lot of different ways, but this would give us the, the number that we want if we were to plug that into the calculator, so we won't worry about it too much. Number 10, if the natural log of x squared equals 10, what is x? So. We'll do something different here. Here we're taking the natural log of both sides. That was a good idea. Now we're going to do something weird. It has a weird name. It's called exponentiating. We're going to exponentiate both sides, which means I'm going to make both sides the power of x, or sorry, the power of e. So e to the natural log of x squared equals e to the 10. And so e to the natural log of something is that something, right, we just stated that up here, so x squared equals e to the 10, and so x equals plus or minus the square root of e to the 10, uh, which I guess would be uh, plus or minus e to the 5. All right, um, 13, the natural log of the square root of x plus 2 equals 1. So again, we're taking the natural log of something with x in it. We want to, you know, break that out. So we'll exponentiate both sides. And now e to the, that power equals e to the 1. So now these guys quote unquote cancel each other out and we get x plus 2 equals e. We square both sides. x plus 2 equals e squared. x equals e squared minus 2. It's just becoming familiar with that inver in inverse relationship, being able to manipulate expressions with e to the x and natural log of x. Now, 
let's play around with some derivatives. Uh, we'll start with number 37. Right. And, and all we need to remember is, uh, is a new rule the, that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So it is its own derivative. So if y equals e to the square root of x, what is the derivative of y? So I know that the derivative of e to the something, right, this is a chain rule now. It's not e to the x, but it is e to the something. So I start with the derivative of the outside function, which is e to the square root of x. It's its own derivative. Now we multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is x to the 1 half power. So we have 1 half x to the negative 1 half. You can write this as e to the square root of x. Um, just over 2 root x would be just fine. Um, next, 41. Uh, y equals the natural log of 1 plus, uh, 1 plus e to the 2x. Okay, so we're mixing the natural log and, and e to the x. We just need to remember everything we've learned and put it all together, right? We've got an outside function and an inside function. We're going to use the chain rule, so we'll start with that. Uh, so the derivative of the outside function, the derivative of the natural log of something, is 1 over that something. Okay, so that's the, the outside function part. The inside function, the derivative of 1 plus e to the 2x. Uh, so we're going to multiply by that. The derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of e to the 2x well, here we go, chain rule again. E to the, the derivative of e to the something is e to the something. And then the chain rule says we've got to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is 2. So we'll just do 2e to the 2x. So we could write it as 2e to the 2x over 1 plus e to the 2x. Okay. So it's just a matter of um, keeping a, a, a level head and, and not freaking out and just applying all the rules that you know, uh, whether it need to be the chain rule or the, the quotient rule or the product rule, uh, and keeping in mind the new derivatives that we have, the derivatives of natural log and of e to the uh, of e to the x or e to the u or whatever. Okay, and as we uh, do these more and more, we'll we we'll become better at them. So, um, forty four. y is equal to e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. Okay, so y prime then would be the derivative of that. Well, uh, it's probably easier to write this as 1 half times e to the x minus e to the negative x. So now the derivative is just going to be 1 half times the derivative of this. So it turns out to be not so hard. Uh, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Done. The derivative of e to the negative x, that's going to require the chain rule. So we'll do minus. Uh, the derivative of e to the something is e to the something. Then we're supposed to, by the chain rule, multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is negative 1. So we could just make that positive. So e to the x plus e to the negative x. Uh, so you could imagine, like, if, if I just had e to the x plus e to the negative x, and I kept taking the derivative of it, e to the x minus e to the negative x, e to the x plus e to the negative x, and they just keep, you know, this keeps switching back and forth forever and ever. Um, let's see, next, 45. y equals e to the x times sine x plus cosine x. Uh, so we've got a function times another function. Uh, if we just leave it like that, we're going to use the product rule, because we have a product of functions. So we have f of x, uh, or say, let's say the derivative of f of x times g of x plus uh, f of x times the derivative of g of x. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, okay, times f of x, plus 
e the, the, the first function, not the derivative of this, not that it makes any difference with e to the x, okay, times now the derivative of the second function. So we have cosine x minus sine x. So there's our derivative. Um, mm -hmm. We could factor out an e to the x, and we'll get sine x plus cosine x plus cosine x minus sine x. And we get e to the x. We got sine x minus sine x. Those cancel each other out. And we got cosine x plus cosine x. That's 2 cosine x. So we could write it as 2 e to the x cosine x. So that's pretty cool. Uh, next, um, 58. Okay, we're going to delve into differential equations again. Um, oh, wait, that's not till the, the next few. This one we're going to use implicit differentiation. To find the derivative of e to the xy plus x squared minus y squared equals is a 10. So implicit differentiation says, well, you see how that there's y in two different places, not like all these other functions we took the derivative of. These are all y equals, y equals, y equals, y equals. Um, now, it's not y equals. And instead of trying to get it to be y equals, which would be quite a challenge, um, quite a challenge, uh, we'll take the derivative of everything at once, and uh, and we'll get y primes in there, or dy dx's in there, and we'll solve for those. Uh, so first, let's take the derivative of both sides. Derivative of e to the xy. Okay, so the derivative of e to the something is e to the something. But then we need to take the derivative of the inside function and multiply by the chain rule. Uh, to take the derivative of xy, we have to do the, the uh, product rule. So we'll do uh, the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1 times y, that's the first part of the product rule, plus x times uh, the derivative of y with respect to x, so y prime or dy dx. Okay. Um, plus, this is just 2x, because we're taking the derivative with respect to x, minus okay, the derivative of y squared well, now y is like the inside function, so we're going to have to use the chain rule on this. So that would be 2y to the first times the derivative of y with respect to x, dy dx. All right. And that completes the chain rule, and we can move to the other side now and take the derivative of 10, which is 0. All right. So now we want to get dy dx by itself, um, which means I you know, need to like collect like terms here and factor out a dy dx, and then solve for dy dx. So um, to do that, to get this out of the parentheses, I've got to do this distribution here. So I've got e to the xy um, times y plus e to the xy times dy dx plus 2x minus 2y times dy dx equals 0. Now we can um, get the dy dx terms on one side while we put the others on the other side. So here we have e to the xy times dy dx uh, minus 2y times dy dx equals um, negative e to the xy times y minus 2x. Now we have two terms with dy dx in them, and we can factor out that dy dx. We have e to the xy, here in the parentheses, minus 2y, equals negative e to the xy times y minus 2x. And to get dy dx by itself, we would just need to divide by its coefficient here, and we will be done in just about three minutes after I get done writing all of these things. e to the x, x, 
xy minus 2y. Okay, messy, but done. We found the derivative of y with respect to x. So at any point on this graph, where we find x and y, we can plug that in and know the slope of the tangent line. Awesome. I know. 62. Um, we want to find the second derivative. Yes. So, uh, so it's just displaying e to the x's awesome power to be its own derivative and to keep being its own derivative as you keep taking the derivative over and over and over. Okay. So, uh, g prime is equal to, how are we going to take the derivative of this thing here? Well, I just can take the derivative of this, that's easy, 1 half x to the negative 1 half uh, plus, and I take the derivative of this, so this is a function times another function, so we need to do the uh, product rule. So we'll take the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x, uh, times the natural log of x, plus uh, e to the x, not not e to the x derivative, but e to the x, the, the original, times the derivative of natural log of x, which is 1 over x. Okay, um, so good enough for me right now. Let's take the second derivative. All right. uh, so negative 1 half times 1 half is negative 1 fourth x to the negative 3 halves. Yes. Uh, plus, well, this is interesting, because doing the product rule, we wound up actually creating the exact same function again as part of the derivative. So we know the derivative of e to the x natural log of x is this much. So we have this again uh, as the derivative of e to the x natural log of x. So we'll uh, you know, move that along here. Uh, so we'll write that again, e to the x, natural log of x, plus e to the x times 1 over x. Okay. Now that's just the derivative of this, this part here. Okay. We still need to go on and say, take the derivative of this here. Uh, which, what shall we choose? Either the, treat it like this as a, as a product rule, or we could do the quotient rule. Um, uh, let's do the, the product rule. We'll, we'll treat this as x to the negative 1. So e to the x, the derivative of e to the x, we're doing the product rule right now. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x times uh, say x to the negative 1 plus e to the x times the derivative of 1 over x, which would be uh, negative negative x to the negative 2. Barely squeeze that in there. Um, let's see. Well, we've got a couple of things we could simplify. I guess we could first thing make this uh, 1 over 4 times x to the 3 halves. That's a 3 halves. Um, plus Let's see, e to the x, natural log of x, uh, plus, here we have e to the x times 1 over x, and again, e to the x times 1 over x. So we could just say we have two of those, 2 e to the x over x, um, minus, because we have a negative here, minus e to the x over x squared. Uh, yeah, messy, but it uh, uh, looks like that's about as good as it gets. All right, so let's move over here. We can put it right there. Uh, all right. What are we doing here? Number 64. So now we're going to deal with differential equations, like I said we were going to a while ago. So they're saying this function here, y equals e to the x uh, times 3 
cosine 2x minus 4 sine 2x show that it is a solution to this differential equation y double prime minus 2 times y prime plus 5y equals 0. So a fairly simplistic definition of a differential equation is one that involves a function and its derivative, and possibly its second derivative, or third derivative, or whatever. So if this is a solution to this differential equation, that means that uh, if I take this function, put it here, then take its derivative, put it here, take its second derivative, put it here, I should get 0, which means we need to have its derivative and its second derivative. So here we go. y prime is equal to, so we're going to take the derivative of this function, which will require the product rule. So we'll have the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x, times the original function, 3 cosine 2x minus 4 sine 2x um, plus the, uh, the function e to the x times the derivative of this second function. So the derivative of 3 cosine 2x will be 3, a negative 3, negative 3 uh, sine of 2x. Okay, so that's the derivative of the outside function. Now we need to take the derivative of the inside function. So that would be 2. So now we can change this to a 6. Negative 6 uh, sine 2x. Let me just back up a little bit change that to a negative 6 sine 2x. Uh, then we are going to take the derivative of negative 4 sine 2x. So that's going to be negative uh, 4 times the cosine of 2x times the derivative of 2x, which is 2. So that will give us an 8 here. All right. Well, that's the first derivative, and now we need the second derivative, which means we need a lot of room. y double prime is equal to the derivative of this function. Well, within this function is actually the original function here. So you see when we have product rules uh, where one of the function is one of the functions is e to the x, we're going to get exactly the same function again as part of the result of the product rule. So the derivative of this part is actually this entire function. right? The derivative of this thing, which is the same as this, the derivative of this is this whole thing. So it appears again. So the derivative of this first part is everything we see there. So e to the x times 3 cosine 2x minus 4 sine 2x plus e to the x times negative 6 sine 2x minus 8 cosine 2x. OK, well, <laughs> that's the derivative of that thing. And now we take the derivative of this and add it on. So we will add on the derivative of this function. So use the product rule again, just like we did up here. So uh, the first, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x times this function, negative 6 sine 2x, uh, oh, I should not have that parentheses there, minus 8 cosine 2x, okay, uh, yes, plus, okay, we're still doing the, the, the product rule here, so we took the derivative of e to the x times this, plus e to the x, times the derivative of this guy here. So let's see, that's going to be negative uh, 12. I'll show you why it's 12 uh, times the cosine of 2x. Because the derivative of cosine, or the derivative of sine 2x is cosine 2x times the derivative of 2x. And the derivative of 2x is 2, so you have to bring that out, and 2 times 6 is 12. Okay, minus. <laughs> 
And as I'm looking at this, I know I'm going to take the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine, so that's going to make this positive. I know that I'm going to use the chain rule, and I have to multiply by the derivative of 2x, which is make this plus 16 sine 2x. All right. So we have y prime and y double prime, and now we can plug it into this differential equation and see if we get 0. Don't you love when you do a math problem and the answer is 0 or 1 with all this stuff? I think it's just wonderful. Okay, so here is y double prime. Um, so let's just save ourselves some work and some space, and, um, and we'll just say this is y double prime. We'll use it. And from that, we will subtract y prime, uh, actually 2 times y prime. So we'll subtract from this 2 times uh, y prime, which is e to the x. And actually, let's, yeah, I, I'm imagining that we're going to get a bunch of sines and cosines of 2x, and they're all going to subtract each other away. So I'm going to distribute this e to the x just to save us some time. So, so negative 2, that's this negative 2 times y prime. y prime will be, uh, at, we'll write this down as we distribute e to the x. So we'll have 3 e to the x cosine 2x um, minus 4 e to the x sine 2x. Um, so that is this part with e to the x distributed plus distributing this e to the x we have uh, a negative 6 e to the x sine 2x um, minus 8 e to the x sine or not not sine cosine cosine 2x This whole thing is multiplied by negative 2. This negative 2, again, comes from right there. Uh, plus 5 times y. Plus 5 times y. And, of course, y is this. Uh, so we have, I'm going to distribute the e to the x as we do this. So uh, we have 3 e to the x cosine 2x minus 4 e to the x sine 2x uh -huh. <laughs> just making sure everything got distributed correctly okay so we have this uh, y double prime minus 2 times y prime plus 5 times y and now we just get to clean this all up and uh, see if everything cancels out so um, here's y double prime, and it's going to be added on to all this other stuff. So we will now, below this, write. Uh, so this whole thing is y double prime, and we're going to distribute these e to the x's. Um, so we have e to the, um, let's see, 3 e to the x cosine 2x. 3e to the x cosine 2x minus 4e to the x sine 2x uh, plus, let's say, minus, minus 6e to the x sine 2x um, minus 8 sine, or sorry, 8 e to the x sine 2x. So that's that first line with the e to the x is distributed. Um, plus negative 6 e to the x uh, sine 2x. Minus 8 e to the x. Uh, e to the x cosine 2x. Minus 12e to the x is 12e to the x cosine 2x um, plus 16e to the x sine 2x.
All right. Um, so let's see if we can get, if we can just kind of look at he, at this, see what's going to happen, uh, and cancel some things out possibly. Um, just a hunch here. Let's see. We have. Um, Let's see, we have uh, e to the x sine 2x um, minus 8 e to the x sine 2x um, minus 6 e to the x sine 2x um, minus 4 e to the x sine 2x. Hmm, let's see. This is a this is a real. Let's do this. Let's take out our calculator. We have sine. We have we have a certain number of e to the x uh, cosine two x's and a certain number of e to the x sine two x's. So, in our calculator here, let's keep track, and we'll add up all of the uh, cosine two x's. Let's just start with that. So here we have because we we can see that they're all e to the x sine 2x or e to the x cosine 2x and it's just a matter of the coefficient. So we'll, we'll start with the cosines. So we have negative 6 of them. Negative 6 of them. Um, let's see. Here's um, another cosine. So we now have a negative negative 8. Negative 2 times negative 8. So positive 16 of them. So we'll add 16 of those. Okay, and now we have 15 of them, so we'll add 15 of them. Um, and now we have three more of them. Now we have minus 8 of them and minus 12 of them. And we have 8 of them left. Um, Let's see. Okay, I've I've found my mistake here. That's part of calculus. So after just reviewing and making sure that I wrote everything down right, I found out that I didn't write it down correctly. This should have been cosine two x cosine. Maybe I'll just write it like this. There we go. Not sine. So there's a negative eight e to the x cosine x or cosine two x. Um, so that would subtract that eight that was left over. And now, so the rest of it should cancel itself out. So that's the cosines. All the cosines will cancel each other out. And now we'll do the sines, and this should be just fine. So negative two times negative four that'll be a positive eight of them. And then here we're going to get a positive twelve. So add. 12. Okay, and now we have minus 20 of them. We're going to distribute that 5. Um, mm -mm -mm. Minus 4. Uh, minus 6. Minus another 6. Plus 16. And there's 0 of those. So when we distribute these and you know add up all the e to the x sine x's and e to the x cosine x's, we find that they cancel all of each other out. Um, so what was I going to say about that? Oh, so in in my looking for my mistake, I looked in the solutions manual. We could have made this uh, a little simpler by using something called the double angle formula, but uh, we didn't. We we did it this way, and it it worked out. Okay, I don't know if I'd say it worked out great, but uh, we were able to find the mistake and fix it. So now let's move on to uh, anything there. No integration. We're gonna do some integration, making things look like e to the u du, right? Us using u substitution. Uh, so e to the five x times five dx. Well, this doesn't even need any work. This is just all done because if you notice this is if we let this be u, uh, then the derivative of 
of 5x would be 5 dx, so this is du. Okay, and all we need to recognize and remember is that the, the answer derivative of, of e to the x dx is uh, e to the x plus c. And, you know, to write this is kind of silly, but u represents any function at all. So e to that power of a function times the derivative of that function will be e to the u plus c, and it just kind of follows from the chain rule. Uh, so we get to say that this is just e to the 5x plus c. If we were to take the derivative of this using the chain rule, we would get just this right here. And I did not write down what number that was. That was 85. Uh, 88. The antiderivative of e to the 1 over x squared power, 1 over x squared, so in the exponent is 1 over x squared, over x to the third dx. Uh, so we would like to make this look like e to the u du, e to some power times the derivative of, of that power. So what we have e to the, let's write this in a little bit easier to look at form. We have e to the x to the negative 2 power. Um, and if we look at this as e to the 1 over x squared times 1 over x to the third dx, now we can see that that 1 over x to the third could be written as x to the negative 3 dx. And here, if we let this be u, then this is almost du, uh, except we, if we take the derivative of, e, uh, of x to the negative 2, if this is u, then the derivative of that would be negative, uh, let's see, negative 2 x to the negative 3. So now this is du, and it looks like e to the u du, just like this. Um, but we can't just multiply by negative 2, we'll multiply by negative 1 half out here to counteract that. And so we get negative 1 half times e to the u, and u is x to the negative 2 plus c. So we're going to take the derivative of this, use the chain rule. This is exactly what we would get. Um, without that negative 2 there. Um, number 93. Indefinite integral e to the x, e to the x of r plus e to the negative x over e to the x minus e to the negative x and all that's times dx. Well, so what do we do here? We've got this um, this function over another function. It's not exactly going to be e to the u du, right? There's, all, there's several different e to the x's. Uh, but what we might recognize from earlier in this homework is that e to the x minus uh, e to the negative x, like if we take the derivative of that, we're going to get an, like an e to the x something here and an e to the negative x something here, and this is an e to the x something and an e to the negative x something. So let's see what the derivative of this would be. So if we let u be equal to that, what would the derivative be? Well, the derivative of e to the x would be e to the x. Derivative of e to the negative x would be uh, we use the chain rule, so e to the negative x times the derivative of negative x, which is negative 1, which would make this a positive. So this could be u, and this all together now is du. So when we have du over u, 
then that, the derivative of that, is the natural log of u. So, or so the answer derivative of that. The answer derivative of du over u is the natural log of u. So we said, right, natural log of the absolute power of u, and u is e to the x minus e to the negative x plus c. Okay, so it's just just keeps snowballing here. We, we keep getting more and more uh, integration uh, functions that we know the integrals of, that we know the derivatives of, and we just keep rolling them right into each other. We get trig functions with logarithms, with e to the x, with power functions, with just all sorts of different stuff, and we have to be thinking in terms of all of those. Can I make this look like x to the n? Can I make this look like e to the x, d, e to the u du? Can I make it look like du over u? Uh, can I make it look like the sign of u? Uh, just uh, all sorts of, of different things that we can do. Um, so it takes a lot of a lot of practice and uh, um, some trial and error and some um, just open eyes just to look and, and see what form this could be in. Um, 96. This one will be our... Um, not last one. So we're going to have a couple more after this. Uh, 96, the integral e to the 2x um, plus, I'm losing myself here, 2e to the x plus 1 over e to the x. So, um, you know, then it occurs to me maybe to try it like this. You know, you get a fraction. Maybe you could take the derivative of this and get this. So that obviously is not going to work. Um, this almost looks like the derivative of that. It isn't, though. And even if it were, it wouldn't help. So uh, what do we do? Let's just try uh, to take each of these over e to the x like they were separate we could split these up into separate fractions that have a common denominator of e to the x and see what happens then. So we have e to the 2x over e to the x, and then we have 2e to the x over e to the x, this is kind of looking good, plus 1 over e to the x dx. Okay, so actually it looks like some stuff could clean up here. We have e to the 2x over e to the x. Um, we can subtract those exponents and just get e to the x. That I can take the integral of, plus 2e to the x over e to the x. These will just cancel each other out. We have 2. I can take the integral of that, plus e to the negative x. Um, that doesn't seem too hard. So let's see. The, the, the antiderivative of e to the x would be e to the x. The antiderivative of 2 would be 2x. And the antiderivative of e to the negative x, well, if, if I like work my way backwards, uh, thinking of what this function can be and taking the derivative, uh, it wouldn't take too long to figure out that e to the negative x, you know, I take the derivative of that, you have e to the negative x, but then you have to use the chain rule, which means you would multiply by a negative, and in order to get a positive, we would have to have a negative in the first place. So... The derivative of e to the negative x is positive e to the negative x, like we saw here, actually. So that worked out. We, we divided each one by this term e to the x. Things canceled out nicely, making it possible for us to take the derivative there. All right, so we'll apply this to uh, definite integrals. We'll, we'll actually have some limits of integration, and uh, that'll be it. Um, Let's see, 99. So the definite integral from 0 to 1 of e to the negative 2x, e to the negative 2x dx. OK, of course, we're going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. We're going to take the antiderivative and plug in uh, 1 plug in 0 and subtract. So first we have to find the antiderivative of e to the negative 2x dx. So if we um, 
probably let this be u. Then du would be negative 2. So we would need a negative 2 here, and then this could be du. Uh, but we need to then multiply by negative 1 half to counteract that negative 2 multiple. Uh, so we have e to the negative 2x times negative 2 dx. That would be the derivative of negative 2. So the uh, u substitution method lets us now write this as negative 1 half times e to the, uh, to the u, so negative 2x plus c. And now we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus, which tells us that we take this function and plug in 1, so that's negative 2 times 1, minus a negative 1 half, so that would be a positive, so plus 1 half times e to the negative 2 times 0. So here we have negative 1 half times e to the negative 2, so this would be 1, negative 1 over 2e squared, uh, plus uh, a half times uh, e to the 0, and e to the 0, anything to the 0 is 1, so plus a half. Um, that's it. So 1 half minus 1 over 2e squared. That's just fine. 1 over 2. From negative 2 to 0. Uh, x squared e to the Okay, so this looks weird. So I'm going to write it a little bit differently. This is supposed to be e to the x cubed divided by 2 dx. Um, let's see. A lot of times, probably we're, we're seeing that if we have an e to the, the x in there, and it, and it looks like e to the something times something else, a lot of times what ha what works is to let u be equal to the uh, the power of e of e. So we'll try this as one half x to the third, x to the third, and then we'll take the derivative uh, is three halves x squared dx. So we've got x squared here, uh, but we need three halves x squared. So um, to replace the x squared dx that I want to replace, right, this could be e to the u, but du is not x squared dx. It's 3 halves x squared dx. But 2 thirds du is equal to x squared dx. So now I can rewrite this as, uh, to, to take the antiderivative at least, uh, as um, e to the u times 2 thirds du. So I'll put the 2 thirds out here and have du here. So this is equal to 2 thirds times e to the u, which is 1 half x to the third power. 1 half times x to the third plus c. So now to take this uh, antiderivative, we're just going to take this function, plug in 0, then plug in negative 2 and subtract. So um, 2 thirds times e to the 1 half times 0 cubed, which would be 0. OK, so that's that. Minus 2 thirds times e to the 1 half times negative 2 negative 2 cubed. So this is 2 thirds times 1. So e to the 0 is 1. Minus 2 thirds times uh, e to the 1 half times negative 2 to the third. Negative 2 to the third would be negative 8. This would be negative 8. Uh, so negative 8 times 1 half is negative 4. Uh, so e to the negative 4. So we could write this as 2 thirds. We could factor out the 2 thirds and get 1 minus 1 over e to the 4th. 
Okay, well that will do it, and uh, that was a that was a quite a long one. So thanks for hanging in there. Um, let me know if you have any questions, any confusions. I'll get back to you as fast as I can. All right, thanks for watching.